Hey guys, students, uh, welcome to an Algebra 2 clip on how to find the absolute value of complex numbers. Okay, so the instructions are for the problem um, are as follows. You have to find the absolute value of the given complex number and represent your solution graphically. Okay, so um, in order to get started, there is a key formula you need to know and also a procedure which is for graphing. Okay, so the formula <coughs> for um, find the absolute value of complex numbers. Let's say you have a complex number z equals a plus bi. All right, you're going to be using the um, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, you know what the Pythagorean theorem is, right? It's c squared equals a squared plus b squared. That's exactly what you're going to be using here. So in this case, you're going to have z squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now, you have to be careful to note that you never take the i into this formula, okay? Just take the coefficient um, of the imaginary part of the complex number, all right? So, you're going to end up with um, the absolute value of z represents the um, absolute value of the complex number e is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared, all right? So, this is the procedure we're going to use to, um, to find the absolute value. And then, when we're going to graph... If you want to graph a complex number, z uh, equals a plus bi, what you do is you just extract the real part, a, and the imaginary part, b, and this would be a x, and it would be like your x and y coordinate, okay? And all you just have to do is make a coordinate system of your real, this is a different color, We have your real and imaginary axis, so you can see um, this is the uh, y-axis is your imaginary axis, and your x-axis is your real axis, and you just basically graph the a and b, okay? So let's say these are a on the x, and this is b on the y, where the two, those two point meets, that's the graph of your complex number z, which is equal to a plus bi. So it's just the same thing as graphing points, where x represents the real number, the real part, and b and y represents the coefficient of the imaginary part. All right, so that's how you graph. Okay, after reviewing these key um, points, let's go ahead and uh, do the examples. Example one, what if we have, we're asked to find um, the absolute value of negative 2 plus 6i. All right, we can clearly see that this is a complex number because we have the real and imaginary part. Um, so let's see. How do we do this? Well, let's name our complex number z, okay? z is going to be what we're finding the absolute value of, which is negative 2 plus 6i, all right? Now, from this, I can clearly see that my a is negative 2, and my b is 6. Remember, don't take the i, okay? And then um, we're now going to use the formula, and I also know that z squared is equal to a squared plus b squared using the Pythagorean theorem on the coordinate system of complex numbers. All right, so if I put that together, I'm going to have z squared equals a squared, parenthesis negative 2 squared, plus b squared, parenthesis 6 squared. All right, now notice when you're squaring, this square affects the minus, right? So that's going to change to positive. So we're going to have z squared equals... Um, 2 squared is 4, 6 squared is 36. All right, and then when we combine it, we'll have this is equal to 40. So z squared is equal to 40. To get z isolated, what we'll do is take the square root of both sides. All right, so when we do that, we're going to have the absolute value of the complex number z is equal to root 40. All right, let's go ahead and uh, break down root 40 uh, real quick. <clears throat> so let's do that on the side right here. So root 40, let's take out the prime numbers, take out 2, 2 times um, 20, take out another 2, 2 times 10, take out another 2, 2 times 5. These two 2's repeat, so we can take the square root of 2 times 2, and it's going to come out as 2. All right, so the square root of 4 is 2. These two remain behind because they don't have any pairs to come out of the square root with. So root 40 is the same thing as 2 root 2 times 5, which is 10. All right? So that's what we're going to replace um, replace root 40 with. So we have the absolute value of z 
of our complex number z is 2 root 10. All right, so there goes our answer. Now let's uh, represent this um, graphically. All right, so what we're going to do is basically graph the point and then um, indicate where this is. So we're graphing, we're going to graph. <coughs> so let's put it here, graph. We're graphing the complex number z is equal to negative 2 plus 6i. All right, so this is a point. This point, this is the, um, the A and this is the B. So we're going to graph, graph um, negative 2 on the X and 6 on the Y. That's all we're graphing. So negative 2 means you go to the left, 6 you go up. So our coordinate, the point is going to be in quadrant number 3, I mean quadrant 2, sorry. So let's draw our Y axis to the right and make our X axis low. Okay, label our coordinate system. This is your real axis. Uh, this is your imaginary axis. We're going to go 2 to the left, 1, 2. That's negative 2. And then we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 6. This is the point Z. Okay, this is the point Z, which is equal to negative 2 plus 6i. So the question now is, where is the absolute value, this result? How can it be represented or uh, indicated on this graph. To capture the absolute value, all we just do is you draw a point, I mean draw a segment from the origin to the point. And guess what? The length of that segment represents the absolute value of the complex number. All right? So this segment right here, absolute value of z has a length of 2 root 10. And we can see why that's the case because if you use the Pythagorean theorem here, um, b square and a square, you're going to get c square right here, and that will be 2 root 10. All right, so there goes your answer and the representation of your answer in graphical form. All right, let's take a look at another problem, question two. Question number two, what if we are asked to find, um, find the absolute value of 5 minus 5i? All right, so let's write this in absolute value form. We'll have z equals 5 minus 5i. All right, in this format, um, we can see what a and b are. We can clearly see that a is 5 and b is negative 5. And then we also know that um, z squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay? All right, we're now going to input this into the formula. We're going to have um, z squared equals a square is positive 5 square plus b square which is negative 5 square. Remember never take the i along with the b or else you're going to have a, a negative output and then that will ruin your result. Okay? So we're going to have z square equals 5 square is 25. Negative 5 square, remember when you square negative it becomes positive. Okay? Plus 25. Alright, when you add that up it gets 50. So z square is equal to 50. To get z isolated we're going to root both sides. And then we're going to have the absolute value of the complex number z is equal to root 50. All right, let's see if we can reduce root 50, break it down. So down the side right here, root 50, I'm going to take out times factors. Take out 5, you're left with 10. Take out another 5, you're left with 2. All right, these two 5s can come out as a 5. All right, this 2 stays behind because it's... Uh, on it by itself, it doesn't have another f identical factor to come out with. Okay, so this becomes a uh, 5 root 2. So we can clearly see that the absolute value of the complex number 5 minus 5i, which is the absolute value of z, is equal to 5 root 2 in its simplified radical form. All right? Okay, now let's represent this answer graphically. Now we're going to do the graph part. All right, so let's graph. So what we're graphing is we're going to graph the complex number z, which is equal to 5 minus 5i. Five All right? And we can see that this is a and this is b. So what we're doing is we're going to graph the point 5 comma negative 5. That's the point that we're, we're going to graph. All right, so let's see. Uh, 5 means you go to the right 5 units, negative 5 go down 5, so our uh, point is going to be in quadrant 4. 
So that means we're going to shift our Y axis to the left and then shift our X axis high up so that we can uh, compensate for the location of the uh, graph of the absolute value of the complex number. Okay, so we're going to go to the right one, two, three, four, five. That's fine. This is the real axis. So go ahead and label, label it. And then this is the imaginary axis. On the imaginary axis, which is the B part, we're going to be going down five. One, two, three, four, five also. All right, so this is negative five. And this point right here represents a graph of this complex number. Um, negative five minus five, I mean five minus five right on a complex coordinate plane, okay? So this point right here, this is Z, which is equal to five minus five I. And then the uh, absolute value which we just computed is the length from the origin to this point right here, okay? And we can see that using Pythagorean theorem that um, that that is in fact the hypotenuse of this right triangle right here, okay? So this segment that we just graphed, this segment right here, represents the absolute value of the complex number um, z, and it is has a length of 5 root 2. Okay, so there goes our absolute value and the graphical representation of it on a coordinate system. All right, so there you have it. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can get more cool Algebra 2 clips such as this. And uh, feel free to post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. And uh, do give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you liked this clip and share it with your friends via your social networking program. More clips can be found on microserve.com slash algebra2. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.